Hi, my name's Tom Dick. I'm a math advisor for Texas Instruments, and this short video is part of the TI and Focus AP Calculus series. We're going to take a look at using the TI Inspire to construct and graph some McLaurin polynomials. The example we use comes from the 2019 BC exam free response question number six. In that question, we're actually presented with the tangent line for a function, and by inspection, we can see its y intercept is three, slope negative two. And so we can come up with an equation for that fairly easily. So the constant term of 3 represents the function value at 0. The slope is the first derivative value at 0. And the problem provided a table that also gave us the second, third, and fourth derivative values of the function at x equals 0. We're going to use these to build the coefficients for a Maclaurin polynomial, which is a Taylor polynomial centered at x equals 0. What I'm going to do is take each derivative value at each order and divide by its order factorial. So for example, the constant term, we'll take that value in b1, which is 3, and divide by 0 factorial, 0 found in a1. And that's giving us 3 over 0 factorial. That will be the constant term of our Taylor polynomial about 0, or our Maclaurin polynomial. Now I'm using a simple spreadsheet feature to mimic that calculation, where I'm taking each derivative value at x equals 0 and dividing by the factorial of the order of the derivative. And that's easily calculating each of my Maclaurin polynomial coefficients. Now each one of these coefficients is going to be multiplied by the corresponding power of x. So that value 3 is our constant term. We'll multiply that value in cell C1 times x to the 0. And the 0 is found in cell A1. I'm using cell references because that's going to then allow me to easily mimic this calculation for the other corresponding values. There we have negative 2 times x to the first, 3 halves times x squared, negative 23 twelfths times x cubed, and finally 9 fourths times x to the fourth. These, uh, given the values that we were provided, these are all of the terms of Maclaurin polynomials that we can come up with. Now, to, for example, if we wanted the fourth degree Maclaurin polynomial about, that'd be the Taylor polynomial about x equals zero, we would take all of these terms that we've calculated in column D and sum them up. And that's what I'm doing in this cell D6. I'm gonna make that equal to the sum of the entries in D1 through D5. And that's done uh, just like you would do in uh, a spreadsheet. So I've typed out sum of D1 colon D5, and there in yellow you see that Maclaurin polynomial. Now that was an illustration of using the spreadsheet. Uh, you do need a CAS spreadsheet or a computer algebra spreadsheet in order to uh, construct a polynomial that way. Uh, we can also go back to our graphs menu and just kind of iteratively build the different order Maclaurin polynomials. So we have already got the first order one in F1. That's the tangent line approximation. I'm going to take F1 of x and just add on the next order term, which was the 3 times x squared over 2. And adding that on and defining that on as F2 of x, gives us our second order Maclaurin polynomial approximation. If we want to go to third order, we can just keep building from where we left off. I'll take the second order polynomial approximation, f2 of x, and then add on the cubic term. The cubic term, as we calculated in the spreadsheet, was negative 23 over or times x to the third, and it will be over 12. So I am presenting that a little bit differently than what we had in the spreadsheet, but it is equivalent to that term. 
So there's our negative 23x cubed over 12. We added that on the f2 of x, and that f3 of x now gives us our third degree Maclaurin polynomial approximation. And that's the one that was asked for in this problem. Now, some other calculations that we are asked for in BC6 from 2019. First, we're asked for the first three non-zero terms in the Maclaurin series for e to the x. So I'm going to go to the calculus menu, go all the way down to series, and the series, if we're just wanting the first three terms, that'll be the second order, because that'll give us a constant term, first order, and second order term for the Taylor polynomial for e to the x about x equals zero. So here's the syntax for that. We'll take Taylor of e to the x. We indicate the independent variable x. And now we put the order of the polynomial. If we don't add on a value that we want to expand around, it will assume that we're expanding around zero, which is what we wanted here. So there you saw the the Taylor polynomial or the Maclaurin polynomial of order 2 for e to the x. Uh, the next thing we're asked for was to actually take the or find the second degree Taylor polynomial for e to the x times the function we've been approximating uh, with our Maclaurin polynomials f1, f2, and f3 from before. So uh, f3 was our third degree Taylor polynomial approximation for the function f. Let's use it as a replacement. So I'm going to multiply e to the x times f3 of x, but we're just wanting the uh, second order Taylor polynomial of the product. So I'm entering my independent variable x and indicating order 2 for the Taylor polynomial approximation. If I don't add on another value, it'll assume that this is around zero. And there's our second degree Taylor polynomial approximation we're looking for, three plus x plus x squared. Now we're also asked for the original function to calculate a, an approximation of a definite integral from zero to one. Uh, we'll use the third degree Taylor polynomial approximation that we found, which was f3. So I'm putting that in as my integrand, f3 of x. And then finally, we'll put in our variable of integration. And that's going to give us a final value uh, for our approximation. And we'll enter that, and there it is, 97 over 48. Alternative to Riemann sum approximations is to replace the function with a polynomial approximation. Well, that concludes this short video. For more resources like these, please see education.ti.com.